Form Next 2022 and metal additive manufacturing. We're at 6K, <laughs> this is my friend Jamie, and we get to learn all about low oxygen titanium, That's sustainability, cool. yep. all of these really great things in reference to metal additive. Yep. All right, well, take me to school, man. What's first? Okay, well, let's talk about the simplest stuff first. That's right? a great idea. Stainless steel. I love how right? stainless steel is the simplest. It, it happens to be the simplest, <laughs> but it's also the most used. That makes sense. In, the, in, in added manufacturing. I think of kitchen implements. Yep. But in the in the role of manufacturing, though, why would stainless steel be used? Well, so this for added manufacturing, really complex shape for taking heat out of a nuclear oh, application. That seems important. It is important, but it's the it's the simplest material to make a very complex part. Ah, and gyroid infill is the best. This helps sink away heat from a nuclear reactor. Yep. And it's made in stainless steel, which is yep. a great thermal conductor, right? Yep. And what what makes this special? Is it because this is a part that couldn't be made in any other way? It's not. So this is additive manufacturing unique, okay? But if you want to talk about what's really unique about it is that this is made from sustainable sources. Now, okay, when we talk about sustainability and uh, green things and, and you know, it's, it's terms that are thrown around, how is metal additive sustainable? So in the case of metal additive being sustainable, it starts with the mat input materials. So the input material for us, for this, this type of material, is scrap. Really? Yeah, we take 100% we take scrap. We use a proprietary process to size it to the right size. And then we use our Unimelt technology to make a nice, beautiful sphere that can be used to make a very complex part like this using your typical additive manufacturing 3D printing. Oh, so for a powder bed, all of that powder is actually, hopefully, spherical. Yep. And now, from 6K, it's not just spherical, but it's sustainably sourced from 100% scrap. 100% scrap, yep. Wow, do you and have to not, add any virgin material to we it? We don't have to add any virgin material, and the beauty of That's it- That's amazing. The beauty of it, too, is it's more energy efficient, our method of manufacture, because we don't have to melt down a big vat of metal, atomize it, and then only take 25% of the good stuff. Pretty much 100% of what we put into our most energy intensive process, which is the Unimelt, comes out the right size. Really? Ready to go into the machine. Okay, that's impressive. And that's really cool to talk about because we're, we're talking about, you're, you're taking scrap, so you're not taking new pieces of metal and melting down. Like it's scrap, it's, it's it scrap. is kitchen implements. It's, it's old pans and pots and whatnot. It, it's, it, it is. Oh, yep. That's really cool. I mean, I knew this was interesting because it was gyroid infill, <laughs> but I had no idea that stainless steel had that sort of sustainability to yeah, it. I had no idea you call this gyroid infill, but I like it. Dude, learning is fun. <laughs> now there's three other things that yep. I get to learn about from you, but I want you to pick which one is next. Okay, so let's just go with the next biggest okay. volume, which is the titanium. And of course we have just introduced our ultra low oxygen titanium. I heard about which that. Which is what this is made from. So what? Yep. why is low oxygen important when using titanium? So first off, the, the reason that um, most powders are taking out of service, out of the added manufacturing machine, is because they exceed the oxygen level for uh, that particular grade of titanium. Well, I guess, so what, what makes oxygen bad within the additive process? Oh, it ruins the properties of the, oh, of the oh, final I see. part. Yep. Oh, so the final part, like yeah, the isometric yeah, properties yeah, are just it, it, gone. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't like it anymore. I see. Yep. Oh, and so with a higher oxygen count, then your yep. part's just no good. Your part is no longer can meet the mechanical requirements for that part. And so low oxygen titanium yep. gives you better confidence in a final part. In a final part, and it allows you to use the powder more times over and over oh. and still stay within those mechanical boundaries. That's really cool. Yep. And so you're able to, 6K now, because it was just released in form next here, yep. low oxygen titanium. Low oxygen titanium. How do, do you just go and just pick out the little oxygen molecules? Yeah, it's as simple as that. Just little, little a, well, tweezers, little, little tweezers, tweezers, little tweezers, tweezers right? my, yeah. my best engineer has a really small oh, pair of tweezers. really tiny ones? And he just plucks out those <laughs> oxygen atoms, no problem. <laughs> no, we use a proprietary deoxidation process to create the uh, ultra low oxygen titanium. And again, we're also starting with scrap materials from this too. We use a couple of different processes, either used additive powder or where we use hydrogen to embrittle the material and then mechanically mill it down to the right size uh, powder particle. And then we use the Unimelt to make it all nice and spherical so that it prints really nice and you can do this. What did you call those again? This is gyroid infill. Gyroid infill. Gyroid infill. So you could do gyroid gyroid infill. infill. But you, yeah. just, you just said something really interesting. You add oxygen to brittle the material no, to be able hydrogen. to mill. Hydrogen, well, I'm well sorry. Gas. 
where is oxygen removed or where is where is hydrogen added? Yeah, is it so, at the scrap? So yeah, if, if we're talking about the scrap process, we're adding hydrogen into a big hunk of scrap to embrittle it, and then we can use a mechanical milling process to break it down to powder. Then uh, we have to remove the hydrogen back out of it to oh because it's a very low hydrogen spec on a lot of these. Okay, so uh, hydrogen, yep. oxygen, like the, these sort of elements yep. cannot be within the metals or else the no. final part is bad. No, and then uh, in terms of removing the oxygen, we do that, that's one of the final steps that we do is, re is oxygen removal. And that's that 6K proprietary process. 6K proprietary okay. process, yep. This is recycled material, like That's you said. recycled okay. material, yep. So a lot of times on the consumer side of 3D printing, when we talk about recycled PLA or, or uh, PET material, obviously a lot of times we can't just use recycled, we have to add some virgin material because of the, the, the properties of how it looks. You want it to print nice, you want it to melt evenly. Now, if we're talking about recycled titanium, this is amazing. The detail in here is exquisite. That's yeah. amazing. What do you call that? Um, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's like that. it's just a, a fractal sort of design, I would imagine. Yeah. This is really cool, man. This is yep. really, really it's, cool. It's your point. We don't have to use any virgin material to make this. It can all come from scratch. That's huge. And nobody knows the difference. So this one looks very rockety. Yes, it is very rockety. It's a combustor. Oh, a combustor. Okay. Yep. Okay, it's where combustion happens, yeah, I would imagine. Right. Yep. And it is made from tungsten rhenium. Tungsten rhenium. Yep. Okay, I, I, I know what tungsten is, yep. but rhenium. Kind of in the same family, both refractory metals. Okay. Rhenium is just much more expensive than tungsten. Oh. It's a little rare. Okay. <laughs> but why would someone choose tungsten rhenium over tungsten? It's because of both the strength properties at high temperature, which is uh, what you're oh, which is and, and it ends up being the reusability of, of a part like this at very high temperatures. So tungsten yeah. rhenium means that this part will not only be good when it's first used, but be good on second, That's third, right. fourth. That's right. And at higher operating temperatures and Okay. All types of things. Yep. Not previously possible with any other technology besides additive manufacturing. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. Is there scraps? So there are some scrap forms. This is a little less scrappy than some of the okay. other ones. Um, and that's mostly because of the high value of rhenium. Right. Yep. This is really cool, man. We've got one more part. Yep. It's it's not the showiest part, but no. uh, 6K add. What what makes this plate so special? Yeah, so it's a big, just a big, thick piece of tungsten. 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 Yeah. Tungsten. Like yep. I, I know tungsten strands and light bulbs are what illuminate. Right. So then, this is obviously a lot more yep. of it. Just that, just that, <laughs> just that uh, heavy metal in a lot of different applications where you're, you need high heat resistance. Now, tungsten as an additive material. Tungsten is an additive material. Something a little bit unique, right? And we're trying to. We're trying to improve upon that because the Unimelt technology allows you to create a really nice spherical tungsten, which has not really been always previously possible. But the uh, Unimelt gives you that nice spherical premium powder, and you can get throughputs to make it that make it possible in production volumes. Okay, you've used this term Unimelt a few times. Yep. Now the Unimelt, I believe, is a 6K process. It is. Okay. Now, it's the core, it's our core technology. Oh, it's a core technology. Yep. So, and so Unimelt takes material and makes it spherical yep. and powder. Yep, so, so what, what we do is we generate plasma from microwaves. So you put gas into the reactor chamber and you super excite it using microwave energy. Yeah. You create plasma, the fourth state of matter. We all love it. <laughs> we all love it because we the, all sun, love plasma. The, the sun is plasma. Oh, sure, it's great. Yep. yep. And, um, and, but what that allows us to do is take individual particles and literally unim melt them. Each little individual particle gets melted. Oh. And then just like the other conventional technologies, uh, surface tension and gravity take over and you get a nice spherical particle. But the difference with, uh -huh. with plasma versus some other methodologies is that you can go to really high temperatures. So the 6K and 6K additive stands for 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which is the temperature of the plasma. Okay, that's hot. So it that's is, really, it really is, hot. It is, it is very hot, but not so hot that you can't control volatilization of some elements and everything. So that makes all this possible. Right, you're, it's, it's yep. 6K, 6,000 degrees Kelvin, but you've controlled the environment, you can, you've made it possible. Yep. I do have one more question. We do have a lot of stuff to look at for him next, but mm -hmm. one more question. Why is a spherical particle better for additive? Like I would imagine, 
the, the, the spherality of all particles. What yep. makes that so good for So additive? it makes it more flowable and spreadable. And if you actually grab our examples here okay. off the well, Unimel, this, that, is... That is, this is not spherical beadstock, okay? And so just kind of roll it. Oh, and it rolls see, like sand. Yeah, right, it, that's exactly right. Good analysis. Now if you grab the <laughs> bottom, you. If you grab the bottom sample, which is post Unimelt, okay, okay this, is this, is what we, this is what we put in, this is what we get out. If you roll that, you can see oh. how it's got a much more even kind of flow. And so it'll flow nice into the machine and spread real nice and evenly, pack evenly. I and so see. Even, the, even the bulk density of this is probably about half of that. Oh, really? So just to give you some idea, yep. Yeah, because of the way it packs together. That's really cool. Okay, I, I, I guess I didn't really consider that in the metal additive machines, right, the, the, the blade has to come across and it has to recover and there's, the ovality ensures that um, each particle is heated the same. Spreads evenly, packs evenly, so you get a nice yeah. dense layer. That's cool. Right, and it's gotta flow through something in all these different machines. That, make, that makes sense. And you have to flow it evenly. If you got this, it's not gonna flow so evenly. No, not at all, like yep. sand, nothing, sand doesn't <laughs> flow. Right. This has been a lot of fun. So Jamie, uh, you know what? I get the feeling my audience is really gonna wanna know more about 6K. Could you look at the camera and just let them know where to go to find out? How about 6kadditive.com? That's good. I'll put that yep. down in the description as well. <laughs> Thank you, man. I Thank appreciate you. it. Have a appreciate good rest it, of Joel. form next. Thank you, too.